In our discussion on nuclear fission, we basically said that nuclear fission is a type of nuclear reaction that releases a lot of energy. Now, a nuclear reactor is basically a structure that stores these unstable atoms that are capable of undergoing nuclear fission reactions. And these reactors can basically force these atoms to undergo a controlled self-sustaining fission reaction known as the chain reaction and this releases a great amount of energy that can be used to do useful work. So one very common example of a nuclear fission reaction that takes place within a nuclear reactor is shown on this board. So we basically have a single neutron that collides at slow velocities in into the following relatively unstable uranium-235 isotope. And when the collision takes place, this nucleus basically absorbs this extra additional neutron creating a very unstable system and that in turn releases or breaks down, this nucleus breaks down into these two fragments. We have the barium atom as well as the krypton atom. And in the process, it releases several other neutrons, in this case, three neutrons as well as some energy. Now, this energy can basically be collected while these neutrons can go on to basically further react with other uranium-235 atoms present and this basically leads to a self-sustained chain reaction of fission. So basically we have a lot of these atoms basically breaking down into barium krypton forming a lot of energy and we can collect or harvest some of this energy. Energy. Now, in this lecture, we're not going to focus so much on what actually takes place inside the nuclear reactor or the structure of the nuclear reactor. We're only going to focus on the difficulties that we face when using nuclear reactors. So let's begin with difficulty number one. <coughs> So, as mentioned earlier, in order for this reaction to actually take place, the neutron has to collide with that uranium-235 at a very low velocity. Now, basically, when these neutrons are released as a result of this single reaction, these neutrons are traveling with very high velocities. And when these neutrons travel with very high velocities and collide with this uh, neutron, nucleus, that nucleus will not be able to absorb that neutron because that neutron is traveling with very high velocities. And so, unless we control this problem, unless we fix the problem, these uh, neutrons with very high velocities will not be able to continue the chain reaction. So once again, the above nuclear fission reaction will only take place if the neutron collides with the atom at low speeds. However, However, the neutrons released during a fission reaction generally move with very high velocities. So the question is, how exactly do we fix this problem? Well, we use something called a moderator. A moderator is basically an atom that has a mass that is very close to the mass of a neutron. Now, when we combine these moderator atoms into the reactant side or into the product side, what happens is collisions that take place between the moderators and these neutrons basically slow down the neutrons to very low velocities. And we know this by the conservation of linear momentum. So by the conservation of linear momentum, a single neutron traveling with a very high velocity as shown in a following diagram that collides with an atom, a moderator that has a mass that is very close to the mass of the neutron 
neutron and which is stationary will basically come to a stop. So it will come into a velocity that is very low. So basically when the collision between our high velocity neutron and the stationary hydrogen atom takes place, the hydrogen atom will move away with a very high velocity while this will essentially come to a stop or will uh, come to a velocity that is very very low and then this uh, neutron can combine with our uh, unstable uranium-235 isotope and form these two atoms. So that is ex exactly how we solve problem number one. We simply add atoms called moderators that have very, very uh, that have masses that are very close to the mass of our neutron. Now let's move on to problem number two. So we have escaping neutrons. So some of the neutrons shown here that are produced as a result of this nuclear reaction can escape, can essentially escape from the nuclear reactor. But remember, we actually need these neutrons for the chain reaction to continue, for the fission reaction to continue. And that means we somehow have to fix this problem of escaping neutrons. So one way to fix this is by basically increasing the amount of fuel present within our fission reaction. Now the fuel is simply the concentration of the reactants and in this case the fuel is the concentration of uranium-235. So by increasing the amount of fuel present, in this case the uranium, it basically means that enough uranium is present to basically continue reacting which basically means we continue forming these free neutrons that we need for our chain reactions to continue. Now the minimum mass of fuel that we need to continue our chain reaction is known as the critical mass. Now if the mass of fuel is below the critical mass that is called subcritical and that means our reaction will not take place. Now, let's move on to problem number three, competing nuclear reactions. So within our nuclear reactor, we not only have these uranium-235 isotopes, we also have other uranium isotopes. And these other uranium isotopes can also absorb the neutron and that will lead to other products that we don't actually want. And this can be a problem. And one way to fix this is basically by increasing the ratio of uranium-235 compared to other uranium isotopes and this is called enriching our uranium. So when we enrich our uranium we basically increase the concentration or the percentage of uranium-235 fuel that is found in our nuclear reactor as compared to other reactants, other uranium isotopes. Oops.